Yo, what's going on everybody? Uh, it's Emeka here from Driven Hard and we are going to do a live reaction of the Range Rover launch. Um, we are just waiting for Land Rover. I got it on my computer. As soon as it goes, I'll throw it up on the screen somewhere around here so you can kind of do a live reaction. Um, let me know in the comments, what are you, this video will be posted, I guess, shortly after the, the actual live. Um, Tech spec here in Driven Hard Warehouse is not up to speed yet for doing live, live, live. But besides the points, what are you looking for um, most with this launch of the new Range Rover? Um, what are you, since this already happened, what are you, uh, here we are, we're about to go live. What are you disappointed with? What are you most excited about? What surprised you? I'm really, really excited to kind of see what goes through here. Um, I'm looking for a couple little things, right? To make, make a Mecca happy, all you gotta do is this, give me some heated and cooled cup holders, right? Catch up with the rest of the luxury world. Heated and cooled cup holders. Uh, I'd like a few more storage options. Um, we know the drivetrain, it's gonna be the 4.4 V8. Um, I, I don't really, I, I'm not a big fan of any of their smaller engines, especially, yeah, yeah, I'm just not a fan of their smaller engines. But the 4.4 V8 from BMW, sourced by BMW. Um, I'm really curious to hear how it sounds. Now we know it's gonna be a slightly softer note on the full fat Range Rover as compared to uh, the Range Rover, Range Rover Sport. So we'll have to wait another year or so for the actual Sport to debut. But um, I don't know, should be exciting here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, I like I'm excited. Like I just want to, you know, we've we've been seeing the the, the spoilers and everything of what's uh, been coming out um, in terms of uh, looks. I want to see how the taillights actually work because right now they look like strips. Um, and you know, with everything, remember, you know, all y'all hating on, oh, the back looks so ugly and all of that. Yeah, you guys are probably the same ones who were saying, oh. The new Range Rover, Range Rover looks like a bigger Evoke, right? When that first debuted, right? Way back then in what, 2012, 13? Um, you know, and that kind of grew and now it's a, it's a classic modern look. One of the reasons they kept the styling was because they didn't want to, the styling that they've, the styling language um, that they've been using for the last decade or so, it's worked so well. Um, they're selling more cars now than they ever have. Um, so why, drastically change the styling language. It doesn't make sense. It's still, you can see the silhouette here, right? The silhouette is still, you can see that's, that's Range Rover, right? And that's the key thing um, when you're going to a next generation. You don't wanna change it too, too much. Um, there are times when you drastically do a big change and maybe throw away the name like they did with the Discovery. Remember that, Discovery and then LR, LR3, LR4, because this discovery name was just plagued with so many reliability issues that it, it, it totally destroyed the name. And then they brought it back with the new discovery and, uh, and that is, is, is smashing sales records. So um, yeah, let's see, it should be commencing here any second. Um, I will have timestamps in the video for those of you who want to skip to certain parts to kind of see my reaction on certain points. Look, you guys notice this? My, my, my little pet, Alibaba, like 20 bucks. Don't buy these off Instagram for like 50. They worth 20, just wait a month for shipping from China. It's very, very easy. All right, looks like it looks like they're getting started here. So let's, uh, let's see what they're doing. That was a tease. I don't know. I love Range Rover. Just so much of what it stands for. And, uh, I just want to go do some off-roading. Hopefully this weekend, get out there. 
you know, I've said this in the video, there's really, you know, Porsche has that saying, there is no substitute. And that's, that's so true. Uh, I, I don't care who you are. Nothing drives like a Porsche drives. And uh, the Range Rover is the same thing. Like these just don't drive like anything else on the market. They do things that nothing else will do on the market as a complete package. Uh, yes, there's better off-roading vehicles like the Wrangler or the, I don't know. You know, I'd say Land Cruiser is, uh, we don't know how well the, the new one works off-road. It works well, but we don't, it's unproven, but you know, they are pretty, pretty neck and neck in terms of a Range Rover and a Land Cruiser off-road. Um, it's just, <laughs> driving home in a Range Rover is a lot nicer. <laughs> My girl Gabby. Four, we almost there. Three, two. I'm curious why they're using so much female for the launch, right? Um, presenter in all the commercials, it's being a female figure in it. I want to know what their choice was or the reasoning behind that. These must be British people because I have no clue who they are. She's a musician or something. I have no clue who this guy is either. Definitely what I don't like is how they've just dumped the um, infotainment system. Like it was, you know, the screen, it's like an afterthought in the interior. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit, but not a fan of that. Let's get to it.
So one of the things I'm looking forward to is see what happens to the stock price after um, this launch. Because yes, I own some Tattoo Motors stock. And if you look, and this is not financial advice, but if you look at all the patterns of when that stock goes up and down over the years of a launch, over the next two years, uh, it tends to be at its highest point. Then it drops down. success story of the night. The death of Range Rover has matured over several generations. Behind every generation, Where is he from? Where is his accent from? Talented and dedicated team. Never more so than today. Is it French? I must say thank you and congratulations to everyone involved in creating the fantastic vehicle we see for the first time tonight. And it's a huge honor to be with you mm. on the eve of another great moment. <sighs> now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Jerry McGovern, our chief creative officer, to the stage to reveal a new flagship to the world. So one thing Terry mentioned in the investor relations reports is how he called them six pillars, I think. And the number one pillar he's focusing on Good is evening, um, reducing so warranty claims, nice. reliability, essentially. So cool. And engineering supremacy has cemented its position as the world's leading luxury SUV. And it is driven by world leaders. I was I, I, I was gonna I was gonna lose my shit if he's a driven hard. <laughs> oh shit. Well I'm gonna hope. Real luxury without desirability. The great luxury 
luxury brands, the best luxury brands and products and experiences are the ones that resonate with customers and clients on an emotional level. And that starts with the eyes. When I look at it, do I desire it? If you don't, you're not going any further. That's so true. Interesting they show that screen how well integrated it is in the current models. I want to hear the reasoning for not doing that again. Free from over ornamentation, free from excessive detail and lines. They have a level of restraint, but they're not cold and they're not clinical. They are emotionally engaging. And you can see it in some of the vehicles we've already produced. And you will see it tonight in abundance when you see the new Range Rover. And of course, our vehicles are about other things too. They're about their integrity, their integrity of purpose. The fact that the engineering and the technical innovation is of a certain standard. And of course, our Range Rovers have always been about their capability, their ability to go above and beyond take people wherever they want to go. Range Rover is no ordinary vehicle and ultimately it is about enriching our customers' lives. Before I reveal the vehicle to you, I just want you to think for a moment about these two quotes. The first one is by Mies van der Rohe, who was arguably the greatest modernist architect of the 20th century. He coined the phrase, less is more. For Range Rover, less is compellingly more. And Coco Chanel, who needs no introduction, once said that luxury lies not in the richness of things, but in the absence of vulgarity. Tonight, the story of Range Rover enters... That's interesting that they, that they do that. It's to prep you. It's to prep your, um, it's to prep you for something. To expect less. It's interesting that they pulled that. Boo! Hate those door handles. Alright, here we go, let's see it. I love this choice of music. They got two models here.
I like the back with the lettering the Range Rover. It looks a lot nicer with that than it does without it. I like the back. You heard it here first. Wouldn't that be nuts if they... Behind it was the Sport. They announced both. You know, from a design standpoint, it is nice, right? From a designer standpoint, yeah, they did nail that part. Flush door handles, we know, is a stupid thing. See how they said ladies and gentlemen? They're really, really, really hammering the females home on this. Launch for some reason. I wonder what that is. What percentage of females are buying these, these cars? I'm going to try to look up that stat. It might be in their paperwork. Um, because they're just hammering it home with this launch. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I'm curious from like a business standpoint. I think the front is the worst part of it because it looks too like, it looks like got punched in the face. It's not aggressive enough for me. And same problem with the current one. That's key. And approach angles.
I'm glad they kind of kept the design language the same. I think it fits. What the hell? There's two roof fins on, or two antenna fins on the on the top of this thing, huh? Those are sexy indicators, damn. Hmm. I'm feeling the back end, boys. Yeah, I love that back end. That back end's the boss. Nice. They kept the train sponsor as a single button or a single lever, not like on the Defender or the Velar. I love having that knob there to control it. I don't want to press the button and then have to shift, shift another knob. Life is going to appreciate that. Leg room, shoulder room were all optimized to benefit from every millimeter to create a third row seat that feels just as good as the others in the vehicle. Hmm. We know that's a lie. They won't feel as good as the second row. It won't. So that's good innovation to catch up with the rest of the space. Mercedes in the X7, I believe, right? See what this is. Hopefully, it's more aggressive front. So, this is what there's more luxurious be driven in one. changes do 
I, I don't know. I'm not feeling the, the extra grill down at the bottom on the SV. It's a little too much chrome. I don't know if I'm feeling Corinthian bronze. Feeling that red one. Yeah. So what this one does is it gives the vehicle another twist. It gives it more of a stealth like appearance. So you could argue three twists in personality because Range Rover has the ability to do that. Yeah, I feel that stealth, stealth one. All right, let's let's see what we got going on here. All right, let, 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 let's see this technical stuff. Oh, sh is that it? Check their websites right now. Well, 
much. as Jaguar Land Rover's Chief Commercial Officer, Nenad Hurnik, is about to tell us some of the pioneering innovations we can expect from this new Range Rover. And uh, what an amazing day it is to be here all together with all of you on this stage with this beautiful, beautiful new Range Rover just behind me. And the design is just fantastic. And you can see this beautiful glass, flash glass on the side. 523 horsepower. <laughs> Shit, why didn't they do more? Hopefully they lost a lot of weight. They not even bring in proper headlights in for the US. Just the garbage premium LED headlights. Big disappointment. That's a bit better. That's really good. Much better than the current plug-in hybrid model that they have. Interesting. So we are focusing on three key areas today, and I would like to explain you a few of the stories and the problems that we have solved. The first one is about dynamics, the driving dynamics. The next one is about refinement within the cabin, and the third one is about connected technology, the smart technology in the car. So let's talk about the dynamics first, the driving dynamics. Of course, it's about how a car drives, even on over uneven. And the other one is about how you go through the bends in the corner. So first of all, talking about the comfort of that bike, that is really about a new technology that we invented, which is the twin felt dampers. They used to be single felt dampers on the old range. Mm -hmm. on those body roll systems 
when you go through the corner. So the flight dynamics really improve. The next thing that we want to talk to you about is about parking. And uh, parking is, a, is, is important because it's a big, big car. And when you want to park it, it can sometimes be difficult. All wheel steering, huh? Fine perfectly. <laughs> Can't wait to test that. Define new because that's also in the last one. So what's the difference? See, I hate when they just pull this marketing bullshit. That's yeah, cool, huh? I think Mercedes is using this as well. That's really neat. Thanks. 
This whole air quality thing, I, I, just, I maybe if you live in like India, it's important, or like just super polluted cities. Mine doesn't take out odor. I can sometimes smell exhaust coming in still, and so it's supposed to be doing this. So does this work with an iPhone as well? Sometimes hell will have when you have to go into a second or especially into a third row. Is how, how do you step in and, and it's all a bit like you know, can I do it? <laughs> Isn't that true? When, you know, it, it, it's not great, um, and especially when you're as stiff as me, by the way. Um, so it's incredibly difficult. And so, our engineers made the second row go forward and upwards, so you've got the same thing. I wonder how comfortable as those type of seats are. I haven't had a chance to sit in those ever, but uh, they don't look that comfortable. Thank you 
so much. And uh, Alexa, is there anything else that we should know about the Range Rover? What do you guys think of some of those features? Yeah. So one of the things that I noticed on the train response is said um, differentials, auto, center lock, center rear lock. So can you now manually lock, 100% lock up the center of the rear at the push of a button? All right, so let's see what the, the engineering, the brains behind everything. And those don't come to America. That's a bummer. We don't get the nice headlights. That was my biggest disappointment when I ordered the Sport. I could not get the Matrix LED headlights. Two people who I have no idea who they are. Oh. Um, I think it's the tradition, isn't it? Yeah, it feels 
by example with its breathtaking modernity, peerless refinement, and unmatched all-terrain capability, and is the most desirable Range Rover ever created. Flush joints, removal of finishers, and clean, expansive surfaces take Land Rover's modernist design philosophy to new levels of emotional engagement. Land Rover has always defined all-terrain capability. Okay. Twin turbocharged gas. All right, guys, so we just wrapped that up. Um, one, if you're still here, still with me, props to you. Um, underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. That's my, I, I just, I'll be honest, I'm, on, I'm underwhelmed um, with it. Uh, Land Rover as a brand has been playing follow up and catch up um, for, for freaking years now, and, and um, this proves it. 
Um, it looks great. It will sell because it's not, it's not different than the last one, not too different, but, um, you know, I, I don't understand why they didn't have a brand new terrain response system. Um, yes, they have terrain response too, but my 19 sport has terrain response too. Yes. There's a little bit more configuration you can do with it with the new Pivi pro that I can't do with my, um, system that I have in my sport. Um, but you can also do that on the Defender right now. Maybe that's why they didn't want to change it to Terrain Response 3. Even though that's probably what it should have been called when they came out with the PV Pro. Um, in order not to piss off all the Defender owners. But, you know, and I'll, let's be honest, we still are waiting for more information about it. We don't know all the technical mumble jumble um but like some of the features like okay four wheel steering well yeah okay yeah that's no brainer that should have been coming um i didn't see anything about heated or cooled cup holders um i'm going to do a video where i'm going to build it and talk about like i'm going to do my build interior features three zone okay four zone climate control front console fridge I, I don't, I don't see he, like front and rear cup holders. See what I mean? So Land Rover, yes, it's, it looks great. I think, um, the design's really growing on me, but it's, they're still playing catch up with the rest of the luxury market. Um, not off road, <laughs> um, but like they still playing catch up. So yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Um, it was nice. Like, yeah, you guys, and you know, like I'm ladder of fanboy, Rage of fanboy, right? This wasn't, this feels about as exciting as the iPhone 12 did to the 11 or like, you know, like, it wasn't a big innovation, a big change or, or anything like that. Um, and I've been playing around with the builder here during the, the boring talking parts. Um, nope, 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 nope. So I don't know. We get a facelift in about what? Five years, right? We'll get the facelift tomorrow. <laughs> So, I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think in the comments? Um, stay tuned. I'm going to do a build video where I build. If if I wanted to get this, how would I build it? The um, How would I configure it and everything? So, I'm going to do that when I get back from the gym. Um, if I had a hundred and... If I, if I needed a new car right now... And I had $152,000 for the standard base, for the standard model, US, uh, for the standard wheelbase autobiography. Would I spend $152,000 on it right now? Hell no, because I don't buy first editions of companies, especially a first edition Land Rover. Are you looking for problems? Personally, I don't have those type of patience to deal with like little things, little glitches and stuff like that, that brand new cars have. Some of y'all, you do. A lot of y'all who bought the Defender don't because all you do is cry on Facebook groups. Ah, my Defender. Ooh, yeah, you bought a first year build. Uh, it takes not a couple build cycles. It takes a year or two to get rid of those glitches. So stop saying it's, oh, they've built it for a few cycles. It's not how things work. I'm super pissed about the lights, the headlights. We get the complete garbage lights, as I like to call them. Acura makes lights that are 10 times brighter than Land Rover makes in the USA. That is embarrassing. So anyways, I'm just going to go on an evil rant. I'm going to go work out at the gym, pump some iron to let my frustrations out. What did you guys think of the launch?